been preaching and teaching in an area, we've been using the backdrop <coughs> of the old hymn, uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And we're, uh, we got a good hum there, Brother Pat. Keep going, keep uh, going, keep going, keep going. Great is Thy Faithfulness. And we've been using that for a backdrop. We won't go through all of that. But we're on the place, uh, pardon for sin and peace that endureth. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. I'm not sure if we can, um, well, I know we can't exhaust that particular subject matter. I am convinced the more we understand pardon, the greater the cause will be to express it to others. And express it in a way that's uh, biblically appropriate. That as we're learning pardon and understanding what good news is, uh, the more we can stay on point. The good news isn't come to Jesus and you'll, you'll give up that bad habit. That's not the good news. The good news isn't you come to Jesus and at home everything will become perfect. Your husband will do all the right. money do. Yes. Your wife will get everything accomplished and lined up just the way you No. Uh, sadly, that's the, the kind of gospel that's being preached often. Um, come to Christ and watch your bank account just grow. You get those new cars. Right. Uh, it isn't any of that, and it may get a whole lot worse. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. The good news has everything to do with Jesus, and it has everything to do with pardon. And the idea of pardon is, is not pardon me. It's, it's pardon of our sin. Right. It's the, the forgiveness of sin. Well, who needs that? Right. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> I want to underline that in such a way because so many people have been deceived that you can be good enough. Religion has told me I'm good enough. We've had people come to this church for various studies that are from a particular background and they've been told they're good enough. And then they hear Pastor Walt saying they're not good enough and we don't see them anymore. Yeah. Well, that's in God's hands. We never want to do that in a rude way or a crude way, right. but we need to get the gospel yeah. out. We need to help people to understand what the pardon is all about. Mm -hmm. And as we better learn to understand it and articulate it, the more authority will come. God blesses his word, not opinions or feelings or right. Experiences. God will not anoint an experience. I've had many great, amazing experiences. Anointing doesn't come through the experience. The anointing comes through the truth of the experience that God was in. Amen. 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 Yes. That's where the power is. Amen. The source is always Christ, Amen. and the source will always align with His Word. That's right. Okay. Amen. Finding it harder and harder today sometimes to have certain conversations because there's such a mishmash yeah. of what's out there that it's like, like, do you even want to try to unravel it? Right. I'm one that I don't want confrontation and I don't want frustration um, that comes up amongst the brethren. It should not be. That's right. But more and more as time's going on, I'm finding more and more the responsibility to try to call. See, iron does sharpen with iron. That God has called all of us to be warriors, to have our equipment on, and to be able to confront, not the enemy, sometimes it's a brother or a sister. On the phone the other evening, and you want to just have fellowship, I received a call, and a few things were said, misquotes from Scripture. And I think, Lord, <laughs> Brother Paul, he wanted just some good fellowship, but he's off the wall here. <laughs> I haven't talked to him in a while. Do I say anything or not say anything? 
Sometimes you open that door, you can't just say two words and, you know, explain it. Don't open any door unless God has got his hand on the handle, okay? If he has his hand on the handle, then he'll help you to know it's being opened. Well, his hand was on the handle, and it was a little while down the road that we began to break down the... It wasn't done intentionally, it's just what was taught. And so we don't condemn people, you know, we don't tell them, hey, you, you know, you, don't you know that better? Don't, I mean, you should know that. No, we never want to belittle anybody. Yeah. And, and I want to caution that if we don't have a good handle on something, be careful, don't go into it, or you might get more confused than they are in trying to explain it. Yeah. Just say, listen on that, I know we're a little off base, and I'd like to talk about it, but I need to get my, my footing a little better, too. And I've shared the testimony here uh, on eternal security in my first confrontation with a pastor who was of a different persuasion, and I love the man, I've done work for the man, and uh, before I knew the Lord, and then after I come to know the Lord, but I didn't know anything about different positions and all that. I just figured if you're a Christian, everybody believes the same thing. That's right. Lo and behold, after I come to know the Lord, he began to tell me where I was wrong. Right. And I've been telling him, and being told and taught that I am right. And oh boy, the confusion came in with me, and I didn't know, and I really felt settled in heart, but I was still young. And after limited time of knowing I couldn't go any further with it because he knew his sword. He, he had it well. I mean, he was 30 plus years in the ministry at that time. I was 30 days or over, but uh, I didn't know anything. I just kind of knew. You ever know when you kind of know? Yeah. Well, you don't go into battle just because you kind of know. You go into battle when you do know. No. Yeah. So I asked him politely, and we had the relationship that uh, if we not go further with this, I'd like to have some time because I'm on a different side of the page than you are, and I'd like to have some time to study mm -hmm. and then get back together. And again, I've shared this, and we studied, and we looked at it. I was taught by a wise pastor that every principle and precept you're going to find in the book pretty much mainline principles and precepts in the book of Genesis will carry through the book of Revelation. It'll, it'll unfold that way all the way. And generally, when it's major, particular, foundational things, you'll find you'll find it in many, many places and in many, many ways. So I said, could we have just a little reprieve from this and give me some time to come back? And whatever the time was that we set, uh, I called him because I did my homework that we got done earlier, uh, and I wanted to get together. I was still very young, and so I wasn't you know, exactly wise about choosing out things. So God wants us to be wise, but in it, he gave me the these textual things based on principle and precept that I was able to take a man who was off and sit back and consider. And it was probably one of the first times that, that it troubled me so when I saw that denominational Hooks can be stronger than truth. Mm -hmm. yes. And sadly, I think in his heart of hearts, he was saying that because God will, even though in my ignorance, will always anoint his word. Mm -hmm. So where we feel comfortable, and sometimes we're most dangerous if we feel completely comfortable. It's best just to let God do it. But if we're going in the right direction and we've done our homework and we've looked at it, and we've prayed about it, and things, you know, it's, it doesn't just turn on, it takes study, it takes the Holy Spirit. But I saw him like, hmm. Well, I didn't know what to do with a 30-year pastor that just sits back and says, hmm, where do you go from there? Right. You're wrong, see? No. So the Lord helped me to it's just where I'm coming from, Pastor. And really, unless you can explain comfortably to me where it makes sense, some of the verses I've shared and some of the principles, I have to stand where I'm standing. It wasn't because of denomination or religion or my upbringing or how I felt 
or experiences I've had. It's got to be the pure word. So when we're into topics, like we're into the topic of, of pardon, I'm convinced that a great deal of the church doesn't get it because the church is so in it. Not this church, reminder that, okay? The church as a whole is disconnected Unequipped. in the area of really having a burden for the lost. Mm. We have a burden for those that we know, you know, children, grandchildren, friends, you know, relatives. We get that burden for them, but it comes out of a, a relationship that we have. Not that that's bad, but it's it's a misappropriated burden. You with me? Yes. Christ's burden was for everyone. He said, I have come to seek and to save that which was lost. And in that terminology, not today, but we'll break that down a little clearer. We've touched on that in the past. But there's really financial terms that are being expressed there. Yeah, there was a price paid. Jesus came to pay a price. Yes. So there was financial language used in that term. So in this area of, of pardon, pardon for sin and the peace that endureth. Psalm 119 and 165, Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Shalom. It's wholeness. It's contentment. Great peace. Great sense of understanding Jesus is enough. Is Jesus enough in your life? Enough to keep you joyful no matter what. <laughs> when the chips are up or the chips are down. Um, we'll be tried and tested there. We'll have to come to an admittance whether it is or isn't so. Um, it's a supernatural work when we're able to get through these kind of things. We can't ever pat ourselves on the back because we've read through the Bible 20 times. That's not, bring, that's not what brings about the peace. It may be part of it, uh, but peace doesn't come just because we're in prayer a long time or even in the Word. This peace comes from understanding. He's got us. We got Him. And there's nothing else that needs to be settled that He has not already attended to. Oh, peace. Are sin taken care of. And nothing shall offend them. In other words, there's no stumbling. The local church, not terribly long ago, more than 50% of the church got up and left that particular work. Because of not God, because of man. And uh, they stumbled. It, it's so easy that we stumble. If someone wants to play follow the leader within this body, you lead yourself out the door and don't try to affect other people. Wherever we may be, God doesn't want us to tear down, He wants us to build up. That's yeah. right. Sometimes we hear about those that have done the, the fallen away or they, they've been part of a particular move and it's on all the time, okay, sadly. We can be part of the aid or the help by pointing them back to the Word. God wants us to be those that would recognize that once in a while we work like emergency room doctors. Whatever comes in the door, you best take care of it. And when we see an ailing saint or a troubled saint or a bothered saint, and I'm not saying there's not a time and a place when sometimes one needs to move. But if we have to move, move right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Move with dignity before a holy God. Move with honor before a holy God. Move with, with a way that it's not going to be disruptive 
and your testimony won't be affected. You can leave in a good way. Today it's rare. But in this understanding of this offended thing, we, we've got to learn that, that God would have us to be in this peace, this uh, shalom, this understanding that all is well in Christ. If you know Him, then you've got His pardon. And what greater thing can you have than His pardon, forgiveness of sin? Well, we can't work out on a planet. We'll, we'll work out in heaven. There'll be a little more time. But be careful you don't take on an offense. Personally or for someone else. And sadly, this church, it, it hits any ministry hard when a follow the leader kind of thing goes. Mm -hmm. Things come into question because there's some at the back of the line that don't even know why. It's just that the ones that are midline are going, you love them, and they want to be doing something wrong, so I'm just following suit. Mm -hmm. And you're clueless to what's happened. Mm -hmm. It's not God's way. When you see that, you know God's not honoring and a person like that is, is out of skip with understanding what pardon is all about and about this idea of this uh, offenses that don't, don't, be, don't be brought into a place where you stumble. Things will happen that are incorrect to us and wrong. We may be misinterpreted or not understood. And the Bible doesn't tell us we're going to agree on everything perfectly. Right? Wherever there's two people, you're going to have disagreement someplace. Yep. So we work through that. And, and uh, bless God in that. We're in the latter days. We're going to need one another. That's right. right? We're convinced of that. So today we have the, the benefit and the opportunity to increase our understanding of what, what pardon of sin is all about. And, uh, and we mentioned that this pardon is good news. That's the gospel. You go ye therefore and preach. He could have said the good news. But it was the gospel. And then make disciples. Make disciples to do what? To do what you're doing. To understand what you understand. Um, and that's wherever we, we may go. The issue that Jesus wanted the church to know more than anything was pardon. Sin forgiven. Mm -hmm. Romans 5 and 1 said, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This peace is irene. We've mentioned in the past that this is like something is disaligned, but now it's aligned and we're in harmony with God. There's nothing better than being in harmony with God. Does that mean we got everything figured out? No. Does that mean that we've got everything worked out even for this day in the proper order? Well, if you're in church, at least that's a good step. But no, it doesn't mean we're, we're going to do everything right. It doesn't mean that we have everything right. But what it means is, Father, I want to know what your will is. And I'm willing to invest day by day to learn it and to grow in it and be willing to come to face to face with if I'm, if I'm off balance in something, please show me. To be at one with God, to be at rest, to be in union with Him. Romans 15 and 13, Now God, the God of hope, fill you with all joy, peace, and believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. This hope is Jesus. Amen. Whenever you use the term hope, don't use it, I mean there might be a few appropriate places for it, but we're not a hope so, maybe so group. If Jesus is in control of your life, we don't have to say, oh, I hope so. I hope it works out. With Christ, all things work out. It'll be His way, but it's going to work out. And everything that works out is going to be according to what His plan and purposes are. And it's always for our good. Did you know that? All things work together for what? It's not for the confusion of the person. It's for the good of the person, right? 
And it's for the one that is what? Called. Has that relationship. Now, not all things work out good for those that are in rebellion against God. If we know a particular truth and we're doing what we want to do, don't try to claim Romans 8.28. Because all things aren't going to work out necessarily so good for you. you got a disciplining hand that might be coming your way. The, the law of thermodynamics might come into play in your life. So we have to realize God has a plan that he wants to work. But his plan works through obedience. He never loses control of anything. But he doesn't intend for some that might lose their lives prematurely because they were doing things they shouldn't have been doing. And that happens. Could have God interrupted it? Yes. But there's a consequence that's going to happen when we violate particular uh, rules and regulations of what we put in the body or, or whatever that may make us not capable of handling the wheel appropriately. Those are sad things. So we just got to be careful we don't start blaming God for things, right? So whether it be that or other things. So the afflictions that are in this life that we go through, we're not to be surprised by. Or to know they're coming. Jesus wanted to prepare us. The big thing is he wants us to understand if you know Christ in a personal, real, and living way, you've experienced pardon, forgiveness of sin. When did the forgiveness of sin happen? This is water, not coffee. Some might want to say, oh, I can't wait for my cup of coffee. <laughs> it's not a, it's, it's an open book text, but the pardon for sin happened at Calvary. The pardon for sin happened for all of mankind right. at Calvary. Amen. It was forgiven. Mm -hmm. yeah. The condition comes in is now receiving that gift by faith. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. Once and for all, Jesus was offered up. Provisionally, all man has been forgiven because of Christ's life that he offered up in his shed blood. The Old Testament, we see that the sacrifice was going on was a type of Christ. And why, why did they have to keep doing that? Because that animal sacrifice in the blood was conditionally provisional. It didn't wipe away any sin. It just rolled it ahead. When Christ went to the cross, he took care of sin. Amen. The Bible tells us he removed the power of sin. Now sin, when that happened? In the garden. In the garden. In the garden. Some people think that they're, they've been good enough in life that they're going to be pretty much removed if they can keep things going right. Believe it or not, some are that to see. Well, just take it right out of their hands of control because you became a sinner the moment you were born. Because of that. Yeah, but he was the first one to sin. In an in untechnical way, yes. But she wasn't respons She wasn't the responsible person. Here the principle of order comes in. Someone said, oh, a pastor and his principles. Well, they're just in the Bible. That's right. We can use a different term. Um, with the Adam and Eve uh, situation. 
principle of orders first uh, that, that comes is position or post. Adam was given the position or the post by Almighty God. The position or post was to be one of one oversight and relationship with Almighty God. But not just Almighty God, but really with creation. So as man in the beginning had oneness with God, he also had oneness with creation. Lions and tigers didn't eat people. Okay? I mean, I don't know how they got along all together, but... Uh, so the, the second area of, of principle in, in this principle of order is relationship and responsibility. Jesus had a position and or a post. John declared his position or post. Remember, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Sin, S-I-N. He had a position or a post. And Jesus' second area of this principle of order was relationship or his responsibility, and that was to take away the sin of the world. So his position was that lamb that came that was going to be offered up, and this relationship or responsibility that was given to him through Almighty God was to take away the sin of the world. John 1 and 29. Thirdly, we see this principle throughout the world. It can be found in government. It can be found in marriage. Um, we don't have time for all that. I'm just trying to give a, a, uh, an order, a principle of order. Third, there's outcome. In a life of Christ, it's always the outcome is to bring glory to God. God's intent for every, every point here will bring in ultimately that glory comes to God. Jesus said that I do always the will of the Father. Other verses to talk about that his life is, is uh, the Father's life really. I and the Father are one. But his whole intent was to bring glory to God. Nothing to do with self. Uh, I would like to get a retirement home. I'd rather live on the other block, uh, East End or West End. No, none of that. It was always to bring glory to God. So we see Adam, his post was to really represent God. Let us create man in our image. He was to represent God. So he, his position or his post was to represent God. Secondly, we see that in, in Adam, his, his relationship or, re, or responsibility was given to him as an overseer. First man was given and in the order of man, in the creation of man, is huge. Because that goes for the whole time. Man became very responsible when he made the mistake of, of following suit with his wife. So man was, was put into position uh, that he would not only represent God, but he would be responsible to tend over all of creation. That's quite a position. Now we know that he was placed in the garden, but he, he, had, he had a huge um, role to play in relationship before God. God held him accountable to where uh, he was posted and what he was supposed to pay attention to. So in his... Um, Outcome, he was to obey God. 
It was expected. Of, now God knew he wasn't going to, right? This didn't surprise God. God had this figured out a long time ago. But we can begin to see in every case the, the principle of order follows suit. So why was Adam the one that was charged in that? Because he was given the, the responsibility to be over. And he was the one that was given to, and the word that's used, that he is, he is to be the guard and protector of his wife. She was taken from his side. The Hebrew word doesn't mean a single rib, rib it's a side. Adam said, bone of my bone. Um, Eve was, was put into a position uh, in, in terms of re relationship and responsibility that God put upon her to be with her husband as a help meet. It's not a bad thing. It's just man has perverted that. Thinking wives should be slaves. The word doesn't mean that at all. But the wife has a distinctively different role to play than the man. So, I'm really getting down to base things, but some of these things, unless we understand, it's difficult to understand some of the other things like pardon for sin. The sin came upon man because Adam sinned. And through the seed of Adam, it was passed down. There was no way of escaping that. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It's not that little baby sinned. How sweet they are. Yeah. That little baby was born a sinner and is in big trouble if they don't know, come up to know Christ as they grow. Now I believe that there is a divine protection and keeping over children that are born until the age of accountability. There's not a whole lot of verses to support that, but that's where I stand and I use where King David had lost his child and said that he can't go to, you know, he can't do anything about this relationship now, but he'll be able to go to him. Yes. We know King David was going to heaven. Where did he know his son was going to heaven? So there's not a lot to support there, but I believe that there's an area of accountability. Right. And I believe that those that, are, that aren't able to uh, account for their actions because of their condition, and sin brought that on, the breakdown of time. God didn't intend disease and these kind of things to be. So I believe that the covering is over a person that is completely incapable. Otherwise, the terms of God's love in that person wouldn't mesh. Because he's allowing that condition to be impossible for that person to ever receive Christ. Are you with me on that? There's some, sadly, that don't take that position. I do not. I take the position that a child before the age of accountability. What is the age of accountability? I think it's different for every child. It's when they're aware of right and wrong. Okay? God knows that. And He knows their condition. And He knows how to meet their condition. And He's the one that's going to be having someone be accountable or not accountable. That's not up to man. Right? We can't put anybody in heaven. We can't take anybody out of heaven. The only thing we can understand is what God has said about going to heaven. And the pardoning of sin, unless it's understood rightly, many are plagued in life because they think they've committed sin and they're in jeopardy now of, of potentially losing their salvation. Well, how could that be, Pastor? Believe me, there's, there's denominations into the countless thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that believe they can lose their salvation. If that was the case, then the work that Christ performed was incomplete. Right. And yet, so now, not only was it incomplete, but he was a liar because he said on the cross, it is finished. Right. What did he say was finished? That the, yeah. the sin debt, yeah. right. the old law, he said, I didn't come to abolish the law, but I come to fulfill the law. Okay? I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. In other words, I've come to pay for or take care of a debt that's owed. Right. Okay? So now when he was on the cross and declared it is paid in full or it is finished, and that's what it means in the grave. Either it was or it wasn't. So he's either, you know, Jesus or a liar. I believe he's 
Jesus. Okay? So if he has tended to it entirely, and now that shed blood was shed for all of mankind, the provision is made for all. So now when a, a man or an individual, man or woman, I believe there's just men or women, you? Yeah. I believe you can tell who they are, too. Yeah. If it really gets tricky, then you might have to get personal, but you're going to figure it out. Yeah. Don't buy into what this culture is trying to push in. Pray against it. And I know it's a very touchy subject to that. We can do it biblically, correctly, and we can do it powerfully in prayer and through prayer. Yeah. Okay? Some of our grandchildren are exposed to things that's very difficult. Uh, but we can pray over. We can, we can give them the answers they need and trust God with who He is to settle it in their hearts. Okay? Whole another subject. So in this finished work, it was Christ. He brought about the pardon for all of man. For God so loved the what? World. world. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The work was already done. So now the exercise of faith, accepting what was done, is what brings in that connection. It's already done. The only thing that he's going to hand you, if you envision a ticket or a pass, is that you've accepted what he's done. As we mentioned last week, the nation of Israel, and primarily God, was through Christ working for the nation of Israel. But he didn't rule out non-Israelites. The book of Isaiah talks about that there's going to be the, the uh, heathen and those that will come to know. God loves all. Amen. But the bigger, bigger picture that we need to look at is that he carved out a nation, Israel, that came from a pagan background that, that became what he was going to be as the people that he would work through. No difference in love. And God has a right to do whatever he wants to do, right? Um, so we can be settled with when we know that that pardon, one happened already. It's happened for us. Whether you accept it or not, that's your choice. Every knee and every tongue will bow that he and profess that he is the Lord. Every one. Now, every professor may not necessarily go to heaven. Because unless we make that profession now in faith while we're on the planet living and not standing before him in glory, he'll either be judge or savior. We settle it now. He's already done the work for you. Are you willing to accept the gift? So when the Jews at Pentecost heard the message, the good news that Jesus is that one that brought about fulfillment of the, the scriptures that they knew about for millennia, when they understood that he was the one that was coming and did in fact come, and they accepted Messiah. And in their accepting of Messiah by faith, salvation is all through Christ. It's all by grace. There's no other way. You can be as good as you want to be. It won't help you. I mean, be good, but it won't help you. You don't get more gold stars, okay? Our righteousness is as filthy rags unto the Lord, okay? I'm not saying not be good. Be good, but it won't, it won't say, I, they're, they're, they're my pets. No, you won't get that from God. He doesn't, doesn't work it that way. So it purely comes to when one can understand. And one cannot understand the gospel unless the gospel is understood by the presenter. And there's some that I've listened to, not because I'm, I'm followers of them, but sometimes I, I, I listen to the nonsense and pray as they're preaching. For what I see is thousands and thousands of people that are listening to lies. So it's important for the church, those that are willing to, to understand what pardon is. 
and what it's what's required to it to receive salvation. It doesn't mean you become a, a goody two-shoe, but you will change. If there is no change, then you didn't make the head-to-heart connection. You can't come to Christ and hang on to everything else. The Jews that at Pentecost that received the Lord, and the Bible tells us that day was 3,000 souls added to the kingdom. 3,000 souls were, were Jewish people were baptized, and in the baptism was a denial of every every system of what they've been hanging on to and believing in up to that point, and now they're putting their full faith and trust into a resurrected Savior that took care of their sin. So it's not denomination or church or being good or even knowing a whole lot of Scripture. I knew very little about Scriptures when I first received the Lord. But it's coming to know what is the good news and what is the bad news. The bad news, all have sinned. Not because they sinned yet, because that little baby didn't sin yet. They will grow to sin. Because there's none perfect, only Christ. No matter how good that person is, they're going to sin. So not only are they a sinner, That's right. but they're going to sin. When we come to know Christ and we believe that He was and is Messiah, and our sin has been taken care of already, what a waste it would be that we leave that undone by accepting the fact that he's made provision for us to get on the bus. Pride will keep us from it. Mm -hmm. Religion will keep us from it. That's right. Laziness will keep us from it. Arrogance. Trying to play it out the best we can. Yeah. You know, I got a few more years to sow my wild oats, so I'm going to do it. You don't know what tomorrow is. You don't know this, this afternoon. I was one of those. It's scary. 30 days. I absolutely knew what salvation was all about and that Christ, when it clicked, I realized it and I was terrified, but still so stubborn that I didn't give in. I was still trying to figure out a way around some things. And then finally, when I surrendered, all those things I was trying to hang on to or work around, none of it mattered. Mm -hmm. And I still wonder, how'd you do that? Yeah. Listen, we become that new creature in Christ, Christ. Jesus Amen. when we come to Him. That's right. So pardon, when we share the gospel, we can share it in a way your sins have already been forgiven. Given. That's right. The work has already been done. That's what Calvary is all about. Amen. Are you willing to accept that for you? Praise God. That's right. Do you believe it was Christ and Christ alone? That's right. Now, sometimes we do have to spend a little time with somebody that we know is hanging on to a lot of things. Yeah. we got to leave the suitcases behind. That's right. They, they, can't, they can't say, I believe in Jesus, and hang on to false idols or gods yeah, or, yeah. Or, or false ways. 100%. It's, it's not a connection. God will not bless that. It's, it is a narrow way. The Bible says few will be that go in that way. Wide is the, the gate that leadeth unto destruction. And it's wide because so many people want to hang on to what they've got. Yeah. They want Jesus and. Yeah. yeah. Afraid of losing. They want religion and. They, they, all those people can't be wrong. I've had the privilege of sitting with uh, various priests down through knowing the Lord. And just man to man, sitting and talking to them and opening up the scripture to them. And I'm convinced there was a few that the revelation came to them. But I could see that they, because of their position, one of them was a very, very well-known uh, minister in Utica. Like big time guys. God had our paths to cross and we sat. And I just simply went over scripture. And he come to a place where he had no answers. And he didn't understand because you can't understand scripture, right? That's, that's the Holy Spirit that brings revelation. That's right, right. And the bondage that was warring with this man that he wouldn't give in or begin to consider. He, he even got a little fearful that he was considering something different. What a stranglehold religion has. So we fight against that, not in a fist of cups, but spiritually. So we have to be able to help someone to understand based on scripture and, and what pardon really is, what good news really is. 
And it's not about life will get better or it's going to be easier or your blood pressure is going to go down. A lot of those things could happen, but that's not what Jesus said. And that's not what the, the apostles preached and taught. So again, we don't do a subject matter that uh, I'd like to say a few more things. And whether I do next week or not, I don't know. But understand this part of it. When you get a hold of it, you're not going to hold back. You're going to praise him. You're going to walk with a, a little bit of a... Now, the skip in my walk is pretty much skipped out. But when I started thinking about it, I'm thinking skip. Uh, lately, some things have changed where you're going to see me more with that walker. But uh, it's my friend. Right. I've been fighting it. But it's my friend right now. And God knows where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And in this area of pardon, I know I've been forgiven. Praise God. And I know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And I know when I sit down and talk to somebody, I don't, I don't have to try to, to try to sell them. I just got to give them the plain truth. Mm -hmm. If someone's really looking for truth, they're going to respond to it. Mm -hmm. If they don't that moment, they're going to consider it. But we have a part in, in keeping them from the, the fires of hell. Because that's where every person is going to go that doesn't receive, and I'm not talking religion. Every person that doesn't receive Christ as the only way, the only one that, that went to a cross and paid their sin debt. If they don't see that, if they reject that, there's no hope for them. And they've made the choice of rejecting Christ over religion or it might be something else. I just don't want to change. I like my life. I'm into doing a lot of sin and I feel good with that. Well, there'll be a time you won't feel good with that. So we come to this with confidence and the world needs to hear a clear message. Not a rah-rah. Just a clear message of what we're trying to explain to them based on God's word, plainly and simply, and let them make that decision what they do with it. God won't give up on them. He'll continue to work on them. He'll continue to draw them. He has promised that everyone will have an opportunity to hear the good news. How he does that with everybody, I don't know. I know how he did it with me, and I know how he did it with several that we've led to Christ. But I don't know how he does it with everybody. But he's faithful. That's right. Everyone will hear the gospel in a way that they're going to understand it. Well, let's have the team come up and close us.